Hey, Jerry here, and I'm really excited to finally reveal my latest Lego creation. Now, I know it's been a while, and as many of those who know me know, I build big and I build complex, and it can take a year or so sometimes to finish my projects. So, it's just down there around the corner, but before we get there, I just want to say that I think, much like my suit of armor back there, that it could be the first of its kind. But let me know if you think otherwise. All right, let's head on back and take a look. And this is the T5 Affliction Mech. It is a mobile, yes, mobile mechanized unit that I can actually get in and move around, which I will demo at a later time in this video. It stands at about six feet, five inches high. Okay, so the T5 Affliction Mech is actually built in a very modular way of about 10 to 12 large size components and another 10 to 12 mid to small size components. That way it can be fully disassembled. You can't disassemble Tom Brady without killing him. Now, all of these components being disassembled allows me to then more easily transport it, get it out of this room through a normal doorway. Okay, so stylistically, you might have noticed that it looks a bit like a spider or scorpion type of mech unit, as opposed to a two-legged humanoid type of mech unit. Well, I did that for a few reasons. First, if it was two-legged, I'd be up a lot higher, I'd have to carry a few hundred pounds of Lego with me, and it'd probably be too heavy for me to move around, much less move around safely. So this gives me a functionally a lower center of gravity. I can actually sit in it and move it around, which I will demonstrate later. So the first thing we're gonna check out are the legs. Well, the T5 Affliction Mech has four legs, which is twice as many as Tom Brady. Now you might've noticed that the front two legs are not actually attached to the main structure. That's because they are more like boots so that when I sit inside the mech unit, I can put my feet in there and move it around. The back legs look pretty cool and provide a little bit of structure. And they have wheels similar to the front boots that are on the ground. You can see a little bit like that. They look a little bit like uh, wheels that you might see on an office chair. Next, let's check out the weaponry. As you can see, it also has bigger guns than Tom Brady. The first gun over here is a pretty standard Gatling Vulcan cannon style of gun. Just take a look around the sides there, get a little bit closer. You can see it's got some ammunition stringing out of it right there and feeding on into it. Uh, this was a bit tough to achieve to make sure it didn't collapse because as you can imagine, this is actually pretty heavy and it sticks out pretty far on its own. Over on the other side, we have a rail gun, or my sci-fi version of a rail gun. Uh, for those unfamiliar with what a rail gun is, well, it is actually still kind of, or at least mainly experimental and even a classified weapon at this point in time. Uh, it uses an electromagnetic force, which is generated along these rails. Mine are positioned vertically more so, while I think others are more horizontal. Uh, to launch at high velocity, a projectile that can actually shoot many times further, faster, and with greater impact than current day conventional weapons. Uh, the rail, my railgun projectiles are over here, are side mounted and side feeding. They actually contain a special plasma rather than just being a solid object, which then can enhance the impact force even greater. So, while even the Navy has not been able to successfully and practically mount a railgun on a battleship even, without requiring a mini power plant and the gun exploding after a few firings, I have been able to make a compact version that side mounts to the T5 Affliction mech. So, if the US military wants to pay me or Moneybags Brady is interested, then I can reveal my secrets of the Lego railgun. Up top, we have a few more weapons at center stage here, and at the tip of the scorpion tail, we have our flame thrower type or napalm type of gun. Uh, you can see that it has two different types of chemicals, one on each side, depending on the mixture and what you want to have happen. 
Off on this shoulder, we have a disc thrower for slicing and dicing. We have large discs coming out of the bottom center, and we have smaller ones coming out of the top. And over on the other shoulder, we have our missile launcher. Pretty standard for any mech unit, I'd say. We've taken a decent look at the front side. Now let's spin her around and take a look at the back side. Here's the back side. Now, you probably are getting a better look now at the scorpion tail. Starts pretty low, comes all the way up. Scorpion tail actually is built in three different segments that can be removed, not including the gun itself at the tip of the scorpion tail. We have a better look at the actual back legs here. And similar to the main structure, the back legs have lots of little doors and panels that can be removed so I can get better access. Anywhere from locking the wheels to removing them all together. We can also see that each one of these legs has a little mounted gun. We have a turret gun here. And we also have another style of turret gun over here. We can also see the back side of the side mount guns, the Gatling or Vulcan cannon style of gun. And we can also see the back side of the rail gun. I also have some windows here so that I can always see when I'm sitting in there. I can see outside and we have some good ventilation system going on. Okay, so let's take a look at the inside. How do we do that? Well, let's open up the canopy. And there we go. Let's head on inside and take a look at the cockpit. All right, we have quite a control panel here of dials and sliders and levers and buttons. A tracking and radar system, making sure we have 100% accuracy when hitting our targets. Tom Brady only has about a 64% accuracy. We have additional chemicals and power sources, many of which are individual, independent, removable, replaceable components. So the final thing I'm going to do here is actually get inside and move around a little bit. Now you may be wondering, how in the world am I going to get inside? The canopy's open, but I'm certainly not going to just jump inside the cockpit. So there is a way to open it up, and it was a bit of an engineering challenge to make this work. But I'm going to show you how it works. I just have one latch right here. Flip that up. Lean that up like that. Do the same thing to the other side. And there we go. Pretty easy access. I don't actually need my shoes. I can use shoes inside these boots, but I already have a nice comfortable pair of slippers already in there. So just scoop myself up to the chair, sit right down. I have a few little sturdy positions where I can shift myself up, get myself in a nice comfortable position. Now the first thing to do is to actually Put my shoes on. There we go. Do my other one. All right. See that? Big boots, big snow boots, ski boots. Okay. So now I'm nice and comfortable in there. Need to put these guys right back down into place. Put the latch back on. Close up the canopy. Let's do this side first. The 
Hope you can still hear me in here. There are two latches, front or bottom and top, to latch the canopy. And we're all set to go. So you can see I got my feet can move still nicely, comfortably in here, side to side. I can spin around. I can back up. I don't want to back up too much. I can scoot forward, turn to shoot at whatever I need to shoot at. I do, I am being careful though. I don't want to hit a wall or anything else I've created here. But you get the idea. quick demo, but that's all I was planning on doing. And there we have it. So that's the T5 Affliction Mech. I hope you think it's cool. It's still in beta form, I'd say. And I know it's not terribly mobile, it's sort of like scooting around on an office chair but it's still a bit more mobile than Tom Brady is. And I can get into it and out of it a lot more quickly than I can this full suit of armor over here. 